Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clueless A Trading Frank on a rainy Sunday after, uh, morning, approximately 9.19 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on uh, January 28, 2018. I might have repeated myself. Um, full disclosure, this uh, introductory uh, session primarily for new members. This is not an advanced coaching session for, um, you know, for uh, more advanced members. But it will cover uh, some of the more important basics of um, of uh, uh, what we are doing here at Clueless A Trading, and it certainly should be helpful a lot, uh, specifically to newer members uh, like uh, Amin, who have joined us in the past couple of weeks. I will be hosting uh, the usual Sunday night, um, 8 p.m. Uh, market uh, related, uh, very specific to uh, you know what's coming up for the next week or two. Uh, till till at least end of the month going into February and that will be tonight Sunday at 8 p.m. So let's uh, let's uh, uh, begin. Uh, let me try to get this out of here. All right. Uh, what I'm going to attempt to do in this particular session, I'm going to try to keep this brief and stay within the time frame that is, you know, that I normally try to stay within. It always goes overboard. Um, just want to make uh, make an uh, important reminder of this particular um, webinar will be uploaded and will be available for free viewing on the Clueless A Trading YouTube channel. And that should certainly be beneficial to everybody and for anybody out there who is not a Clueless A Trading member, friends or family uh, that you might have who might want to review it and learn a little bit more. So let me start off by uh, uh, by. Uh, uh, Explaining a little bit about the uh, basics of um, what we do here at Clueless A Trading, which is uh, quantitative chart analysis, structuring of charts in simple English. We want to know where we're going, up or down, and specific levels we're going to hit. So technical analysis, as we know it, uh, in its purest form, is not a science, even though they might like to call it that. Technical analysis in its purest form is really art. And art appreciation, or if you've, you know, if you like uh, art, modern art, or traditional art, or Renaissance art, or, you know, whatever century art, um, you know that the more you look at it, the more it talks to you. It's the same thing with charts. The more you look at it, the more it'll send you a message. The messages are not easy to read most of the times. The reason being, unlike art, which is a static picture you're looking at, technical analysis and financial markets are fluid. They are moving. They are living organisms. So what happens with that is it creates volatility. And when we are looking at a chart like this, for example, which is a pure representation going all the way back from the days I actually started on Wall Street, to be honest with you, um, a, 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 all the way back to let's say 1997, October of 1997, uh, pretty much when I started. Wow! Um, and um, started my first job on Wall Street. I mean, uh, so bottom line is uh, you can see uh, that uh, it looks uh, uh, it, it looks uh, uh, pretty uh, pretty linear uh, in the sense that oh it went up. What happened here? And then it you know kept on going higher, and this is obviously spanning months and months, right? Uh, and this is 1997, October 1997 to present, pretty long time. Um, 19, uh, what is it? Uh, yeah, uh, the 20 years. Um, and you can say, hey, look at that, you know, this market, it's uh, it had that big correction, and now it just wants to keep on going higher and higher. And um, this is what the naked eye is uh, is looking at. Little turbulence, and now this uh, uh, big move higher. So that's 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 you know sort of the simplistic version of looking at it. Actual trading and investing, specifically trading, which is primarily what we do, and we invest in companies. Obviously, if you want to hold on to some of my trades for you know months and months, feel free to do so, and you can look to where I initially alerted them and look what they are now and some of them are still going higher uh so uh, but trading specifically uh creates substantial noise that noise is not 
easy to see on a daily or weekly basis. That's what we call volatility. That's where traders like yourself, like myself, get confused. Some are far more confused and do uh, 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 abrupt emotional things like selling at the wrong time, selling too early, not buying when it should be bought, during some uh, you know tactical ugly lows um, and or simply sitting aside saying I'll catch the next one which is the most dangerous term in our business there is always a next time there are always opportunities no question about it being long short we are market agnostics we make money when the markets go up and we try to make money when we have these abrupt flash crashes Right in the in 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 the scheme of this big move that started, for example, what we call Wave Five, um, on uh, on the Elliott Wave Theory. Um, and I don't want to get into that right now. Uh, it seems like it's endless. But in between this these beautiful green candles, uh, there have been substantial volatility on a intraday basis, intra week basis, and it's just been you know. Many have uh, many have uh, not only missed great opportunities, which is equal to having a big loss. That's in my book. When I miss a big opportunity by not taking that trade, then that to me is equally a big loss. And has it happened? Absolutely. And uh, but we catch more um, uh, than we than we lose, and that's the essence of the game. Going back to technical analysis. When we look at this, we uh, it, 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 it's, it's it's somewhat deceiving because what we're doing here is not we're not we're not trading for the next ten years. We are trading on weekly, monthly basis. Okay, and everyone has their own thing. You don't have to remember my service is designed to provide very precise, precise, tactical, non-emotional, technical tools. The more you learn the tools the better off you'll be able to manage your stuff. And that's it. I'm not here to build your house. I'm here to build, give you the exact tools so that you know um, how to manage your house. And in due time, you'll manage it better. But you have to learn the skills. And it takes a little bit of time for everybody. For everybody. So going back to technical analysis, um, uh, this uh, smooth chart over the years, uh, where it seems like it's so obvious, you know, what's going on. Nothing is obvious. Um, completely is a false picture. Uh, the false picture meaning that uh, you are looking at a macro view. How about looking at a micro view? And this is your micro view of the markets. And let's go back. Let's try to go back on this macro view of the markets. And this only takes me back to. Uh, talks me back to uh, uh, to, to uh, December of 2017, right? And when you look at the macro view, a micro view of the market, and this is just the laws of nature, right? It's a heck of a lot more choppy. It's a heck of a lot more choppy. And taking that same brush, every one of these little ones little these are all like 20 30 point type of things and then boom a 40 point type of dip a 100 point type of rise all of a sudden things start to get messy that is volatility so volatility management is critical and the next step that we're going to go through in the next five ten minutes is how do we manage volatility that is the same thing as managing trades don't have to be glued to the screen every five minutes. More than 90 plus percent, 95 percent, I would say, of clueless say trading members are professional career people, successful in what they do. And many of them, not all of them, but many of them, and you know, I don't, you know, I, 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 I talk straight facts. Not all of them, like I said, but many of them are doing extremely well because they have started to settle into the skills that I've been teaching and they've been learning. Some are faster learner than others, just the way it is in life. And they understand my charts. They understand what I'm putting through. Sorry, I didn't want to do that. Uh, and uh, 
and they manage things better. And that's the purpose of what we're doing. So all of a sudden, volatility steps in here. This is crazy. So what I try to do, and this being an intro lesson, I'm just going to cover the basics, and then we're going to get a little bit into the nitty-gritty of it. What I try to do is manage the volatility, try to structure it in a way where it is a little bit more understandable. So we take this. Here's your naked chart. You guys know what's coming next. And then I spend my time and energy and the few brain cells that I have left in my head. I create a structure. And once you create a structure, it becomes a roadmap. I repeat, once you create a structure over the over that volatility, that same 15-minute chart, for example, it becomes readable. And when it becomes readable, then my alerts and the charts that come with it make a heck of a lot more sense. And you don't flip and jump and scream and do stupid things at the wrong times. You stick with the trade, whether for the day, whether for a couple of days, whether for a week or two. We have multiple swing short, uh, swing trades that are moving along, specifically on the biotech side, for example, and some specific selections on, on, on a couple of companies that we've been sitting on for weeks. In fact, a couple months, some of them have got bought out. We have had three over the past two years biotech buyouts on companies that I have recommended or suggested. That's huge. The most recent one was Juno Therapeutics. I have a list of the biotech buyout list, which I keep on posting time to time. And I hope some of you have some positions in them, whether through common shares, a few common shares, or through some long dated calls, which can be rolled over month over month. Because I have a conviction and I'm no, you know, I don't have a crystal ball. I just have, a, you know, my brain cells, the few that are left are far more efficient, I believe, than most people out there in this line of business. Um, and uh, and I think um, th there's a potential that some of them are going to get bought out. I benefit, you benefit. And nothing is sweeter than waking up on a morning or during a trading day, looking at your stock halted, and it's up 40 points. And when you get that feeling, trust me, your confidence shoots up big time. You want to have a small position in the next one. Whichever the next one is, because they don't raise a green flag and say, hey, I'm getting bought out. So let's talk about structure. Before I go any further, um, what I've spoken the last couple of minutes, is it making sense? Because remember, to me, simplicity is the key to life success. It is. And through that simplicity, we can conquer the complexities. So if you don't understand the simple stuff, then you ain't going to understand the complex stuff. So is it, has it made some sense? I mean, doctor? Okay. I mean, say structure makes sense. Mike obviously knows this thing. Nick? Yes. yes. Making some sense? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And stop me anytime if you have any quick questions. But we're talking about some broader topics. So what we're looking at here, for example, and this is very relevant to what's happening in front of us. We're in a very powerful market. This market has gone well beyond what I thought it was going to go. But my charts keep on guiding me. You notice that I don't say every single day, that's it. You know, we're going up another 400 points. I say, but the uptrend is intact. Because I am very cautious. Trust me. I know what the markets can do when everyone starts to get a little bit too giddy. And a little too euphoric, as we call it, ecstatic. The machines know. They know people are lumping in into one position or whatever in a big way. And boom, they drop a JDAM over it. In other words, they attack that, level, that particular level and create a false volatility move that wipes out all your profits and takes you into deep red. It's happened so many times. And you can't predict those. It could be a news flash out of something. It could be, you know, the time that, you know, uh, 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 a political uh, news coming out of D.C. It could be a North Korean failed missile uh, launch or whatever. It could be a China crisis on a banking thing. It could be anything. 
So bottom line is that um, besides all that, let's take a look at what we're talking about here, which is structure. And structure is money. I'm not a pure technical analyst. I, mer I merge, I blend um, fundamental, emotional. You know that behavioral game theory is one of my very strong components of my modeling on what I do. Um, economic, uh, macroeconomic, global economics and stuff, which is my passion. Um, and traditional technical analysis mixed in with my style of drawing and, and my style of structuring patterns. Traditional patterns in technical analysis cannot be changed. Those are the core pillars, but you can adjust it, and I have adjusted it. That's why I say traditional technical analysis doesn't work in these type of robotic, algorithmic, high-frequency trading black box markets. That's a mouthful, but it's true. 80 plus percent or so of daily trading in the markets is run by black boxes or automated high frequency trading computers which are trading in nanoseconds. That's the reason why you see stocks up seven and boom, down five, then it's up seven. But the overall trend is what I specialize in predicting and I've been very right on so many things, majority of the stuff. So traditional technical analysis by looking at the same old things doesn't work in my opinion. So this is what we do. So looking at a basic thing here, now that we have structured it, this structure basically tells you what? Simple, keep it simple. Simple stuff will show you that we have now, we were trading within a, um, this, this is your big, this is, for example, is your trading band, right? So this was, this goes back to, look at the data at the bottom. Somebody read the data at the bottom for me. Can somebody see? Um, I just want you guys to follow me. That's the reason I'm asking you to do that. One second. I'm going to go back to... Okay, one second. Because it's not just me talking. I want you guys to understand it. So it's worth your time and mine. Because it gives me great satisfaction when my, my uh, members uh, understand what I'm trying to do. Just bear with me while I make it a little bit more precise. Okay. So what's the date at the bottom, guys? This one? Can anyone see it? 123. Thank you, doctor. So, um, so bottom line is we uh, you're looking at the date down here. It's the 22nd, 23rd of um, January. So this is a very recent chart, and this is what we're dealing with right now. So this has a very strong uh, um, uh, support. We can see that, and that's uh, signified um, by a uh, by uh, I mark it I as a fat. Green, uh, red line that support so that support needs to hold and that support has held that support has basically uh, uh, it started off here so we have one touch two touches at that level the primary uh, the, the primary support and that's approximately at 2825 now this is the this is the futures which is basically the proxy for the active component of the S&P 500 that's traded rapidly, right? So uh, basically the 2625, I'm sorry, 2825 is roughly around 28. If you, if you convert it to the SBX physical number, it comes to roughly about five points higher. So 28, and you can write this down somewhere because I've gone through this several, several times with all my members. It's very important for you guys to keep in mind because we are trading off the S&P 500. We're using it as a proxy to see what's going on on the front side where we're trading the stocks as well as trading the S&P 500, which we have a tremendous success in. So, so 28.30 or so would be the S&P 500. 28.25 on the E-mini is what we call ES. 
I post that all the time, as you know. ESF. These are known as E minis. So this is the E mini at 28.25. So that E mini, you add roughly five points to it or so mentally, and you arrive at the actual SPX. Everyone clear on that? I mean, yes. Okay, good. Simple stuff, but it's very important because it's, for these points matter when you're trading the SPX, and many of our traders do and do really, really well on that. Um, and what happened on Friday was just staggering. What happened to the? And you guys should know it. It's another very important reminder. I'm going to give you a couple of very important reminders at the end of this session, and you guys have to follow it. And one of the one of the ones is that you have to go through my Twitter feed. You're busy during the day, no problem. Do it at the end of the day. Do the end of the day because if you're not in touch with what what happened during the day, you're not going to do too well. Believe me, the following day or 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 over you know over uh, during that week, you just quickly glance at it. it takes ten minutes. So anyway, um, so that's that's how you read it. So the primary support is here. The next level of support, as you can clearly see here, this is not hard, this is very easy to see, uh, is right there, which is roughly this level here, which is 2828, 28, three points higher. So once we structure it, we can see here, this is the way I read it, is that since the 22nd, we were moving on this. Um, once this was formed, I could draw a, an underlying uh, a trend line. So this blue line is an uptrend line, right? Very clear, this uptrend line. And this uptrend line was moving along fine, uh, 24th. Remember, this is day by day stuff going on, and uh, it, it 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 moved powerfully higher um, uh, uh, on the 24th, and uh, it went to the upper end of this channel. This channel, it hit it. It tried to make a new high. The market tried to go into a new high, and boom, came a big flash crash. And that day was, uh, uh, was uh, it started around like 10.30 or so. Uh, and we made money on that flash crash because we went short on the SPX puts. Um, and I can remember every single detail, but it's certainly there on the Twitter feed, you know, right there. Um, uh, they went up by almost 300%. You can buy intraday puts, boom. They just explode because these are very fast moving programs which are creating these sell-offs. And... Um, I'm not going to go into each reason why they sold off. And it's all there on my Twitter feed. Read it. Um, and and so we basically uh, this uh, this this uptrend channel that we were moving in got violated. Normally, uh, it would come down here and then it attempt another bounce, but it just sliced through, and that could be signified. Through this massive green, uh, uh, red, uh, uh, bearish engulfing candles, these are billions and billions of dollars being sold instantaneously by machines. Stop trigger, stops triggered. Retail investors, human investors, just panicking, selling, can't take that loss. Blah blah blah. Normal stuff. Quick reminder: on my YouTube channel, very very importantly, and this is for everybody, not just for new members. Uh, there is a category called new member intro introductory videos, and that particular category has one video which I had uh, found on Pinterest. Okay, good. Uh, and I pinned it there. I put it there, uh, which is called candlestick patterns. I want you guys all to. You know, it's only 15 minutes. It's going to make you a lot of money, in my opinion, and hopefully it's going to make help you lose a lot of money because that explains the basics of candlesticks. So when I'm talking about a bullish engulfing move, or I'm talking about a you know a bearish engulfing candle, um, um, that type of stuff, uh, or a doji, it's all explained there, not by me. It's some robotic voice explaining all that. Okay. So when you go to the YouTube channel, go under playlist, and under play playlist, uh, I'm just going to show that to you guys quickly. Hold on. Very very important, guys. And I'd like to put a, a quick reminder in, very important one. I subscribe to a lot of services, you know, over the years, not in the past 10 years, or so, I mean, six, uh, six, seven years or so, but uh, let's say, uh, no, not over the last four years or so, before that I have. Services just give out alerts, you know, they, 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 some of them just sent me end of the day charts, 
Some of them are highly technical. They never walked me through understanding anything. I taught myself. The more money I made, the more excited I got. Plus, I have an uh, inclination uh, towards uh, structural patterns and charts. And um, so respect what we do here at Clueless A Trading. We try to walk people through and really make them understand what's going on so that they can, make, they can build their own house. They can build their own mansions. Okay? Other services don't do that. Maybe some of them do, but I doubt it. Not to the level that we do. Throughout the day, every single 15 minutes, 20 minutes, hour, we're walking people through what's going on in the markets. I'm engaging with my members. It's not just a, a tweet, an alert, a chart, and then nothing. People can ask questions. Smart traders who we have are active. They are answering those questions. I'm answering the questions in the chat room. This is very, very powerful value-added service, guys. Very important for all of you guys to keep in mind. All for a flat rate, which is very nominal every month. So here you have the here you have the Clueless A Trading Channel. Go there. New member introductory videos. So there are 22 of them. You don't need to listen to 22 of them. Just listen to the recent ones. Listen to ones which talk about basic chart pattern analysis. And um, once you click it, I don't want to click it. And you can basically see all of the ones. So you're interested in marketing. Those are the ads. Okay. So they, they, they're there. So you, you find it. Introduction, you know, th these are these are just the ads from Google. I'm not going to you know, spend my time. But you basically go ahead and click and look at the find the candlestick one, find the ones you know that uh, that are directly related to technical analysis. So understood on that front because this is all related to what I'm talking about. Okay, good. Yes. And now with new technology, you can do it on the iPhone. You know, do an iPhone, iPad when you're sitting around. You know. Don't bore yourself too much, but uh, once you start making a heck of a lot more money, then you'll be more than happy to listen to those. But in order to do that, you have to listen to them. So, so let's go back to this, real simple. So these these are uptrending channels. Uh, we we know the support levels. We know what by now we know what the what the um, break the uh, highs are, and the breakout levels, the ferocious breakout. Remember, they tried once. They tried twice and the third time they said see you later that was friday see you later so if you're not positioned at these levels if you're not positioned here if you're not positioned here or even positioned here during the day you didn't do anything on friday despite the fact that every screen is screaming at you not every stock but the overall uh, uh indices the media New high, Dow going to 27,000 from a behavioral standpoint, what I call behavioral game theory. Very few retail traders are even coming close to making any type of, forget about real money, any type of money. Despite monster, monster alerts from multiple tactical alerts that I'm putting out there and the markets cooperating. So. There is no euphoria, like I say. There is no real joy. There is no, I know some members are just killing it. They're killing it. And um, so, but I'm talking about the overall picture. So that's a good thing. There is technical breakouts and technical euphoria. Yes, the charts are euphoric. But the human retail trader is certainly not, which is a good thing. Because when, they, when all of you together in a bunch, and I say this, you know, as 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 a uh, example, get too excited, the market has topped. So the fact that there is that angst and that disappointment of constantly missing out, constantly selling too early, constantly not taking a position, and saying there's always a next time. The positive side to it is that you still have a chance. So that's what we're doing. So these breakouts are monster short squeezes. So I want to get into that right now. They're technical breakouts on fundamental reasons. There were fundamental reasons for the market to go higher on Friday. Uh, earnings being the primary driver. 
And, uh, and generally speaking, from what I've seen over the years, from a technical standpoint, you have a, you have a floor, for example, and a ceiling. Markets attempt, market attempt. Normally on the third one, they break out. And then the pattern begins again. It'll, you know. So uh, from a breakout standpoint, the third try, it does that. It's a physical law. You keep on hitting something hard with the hammer, it's going to get weaker. So you keep on hitting the roof, keep on hitting the roof, and then, you know, bang, it goes. All right? And there's all the other technical reasons of short squeezes and, and stops triggered on the, on the upside and all kinds of stuff. Short, you know, short stops just gone. The same thing happens on the, on the downside. One, two, three, the market attempts to break. And generally speaking, on the third tie, it generally, if it, you know, it, 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 it breaks down. So when it didn't, you knew something was going to happen. That's called range trading. And I, I, we, I've shown a lot of charts on range trading. And the ranges break out. And once the range breaks out, it's not an endless flow higher. It simply means that there's a continuation pattern that comes into play. At that point, new buyers enter. Remember, new buyers enter. This is all tied in with technical analysis. When new buyers enter here, they don't have baggage of what happened here. In other words, they're new buyers, new money coming in. So they ride the wave. They are riding a level of confidence without the baggage like, oh, I lost money on this pullback because I didn't sell. No, and I sold and I you know, didn't get in. They don't have that baggage. That is manifested in the form of a major technical breakout. That's why they say, and it was basically a term in the C-A-N-S-L-I-M method, Investor's Business Daily, William O'Neill, legendary investor who we you know his paper the investors business daily talks about said a long time ago and everyone's like laughed at it new highs make new highs okay a stock making a new high will create at least one or two more new highs before it has a pullback or a consolidation and there are several factors behind that one i explained new buyers come in they don't have the baggage of previous losses so they go with it the shorts are getting squeezed. Second reason, they kept on shorting it. Now they're just like, oh my God, you know, losing money like crazy. So they cover. What does cover mean? They buy. And those are the two reasons why they, you know, explode higher. The shorts cover and new buyers come in. So new highs come in. New buyers come in. You know, this guy, the person who bought here, let's say at, uh, at $3. Now he's at 4 Seeing the money rise, like that's it. I'm going high, you know. I'm going with it. He buys it at five, creates another new high. Let's say it goes to eight. So, as tactical traders, what we do, we do two things. We generally are buyers at this level. So we are buyers at this level on these reversal hammers, what I call long tail hammers. I didn't call it, but that's the technical term. So we are strategic buyers here. We will sell. Some here, as it approaches major resistance, because that's the roof, we don't know it's going to break out. And once it breaks out, we will hit the pedal to the metal. That's called momentum trading. And I've shown zillions of those. Momentum trading is not like, oh, I'm waiting for a pullback. I'm waiting for a pullback. That's baby stuff. That is, not, that is what retail traders do, because the mind is geared to stop you from making money. You think I'm kidding around? Ask yourself. You want to buy the breakout highs because there is a, a, a short period of time, and I show that through all my charts, where it's going to, and I even show the specific levels where it's going to go. What more could I, what could anyone could ask for? So you want to basically hit pedal to the metal, add more, ride the wave, and then you don't necessarily need to hold till, the, till where I'm showing the ultimate level is going to be, you can sell. So there are three stages. We're general buyers here or at the bottom, which we are a lot. We will sell some here. We will add more. We'll take some profits. Feels good to put some cash. And then we will we will basically take the profits 
And in options trading, it's fantastic. We don't need to keep on rolling the same money. You make some substantial profits in so many of my trades, whether it's NVIDIA, whether it's Priceline, whether it's Netflix, Monsters, Amazon, okay? On the biotech side, multiple names, SAGE, CRISPR technology, AGIO, Juno, bought out, gone. Um, all these things, and take the profits and run with it. So you want to hit them hard here. That's the breakout. You sit around and keep on watching and waiting for that famous pullback. Well, when the pullbacks come, generally speaking, retail traders are not buyers. What do you do? You don't buy breakouts. You don't buy tactical lows. You shouldn't be a trader. You just don't deserve to make money. People who don't. Um, this is a risk game. And what we are doing through technical charts is we are quantifying risk. So if you're not a risk player, then you don't deserve to make money. You can just buy a stock and just sit on it. There you go. You make some money, but not the type of money that you made here. So let's talk about this here. So, so far clean on what I explained, some of the behavioral aspects of it and uh, this type of stuff. Yes? Okay. Um, that's why I always, uh, always uh, say to people, just have a headset so I can hear you, or you can, of course, type it in the box. It's easier for me to hear it, okay, quickly, because then I don't have to look up in my other screen and see who's saying yes or no, all right? So please, try to have a headset, real simple, if you're home or if somewhere, everyone wears a very cool headset, you know? They'll think you're very, someone very important sitting at Starbucks with a headset on, um, listening to Clueless A Trading. So anyway. So this is the simple way of looking at it. This was the channel it was following. We fell out of the channel. Lots of little volatility. We tried to re-enter the channel. Fell out of, you know, rejection, rejection. Then we, um, and this was the original channel. Don't forget, that started all the way back on the 23rd. All right, so I'm going to put one, 23, 2018. And this is real important to what's going on now. Real important. So then we try to we try to enter rejection. Rejection. I'm sorry, not rejection. Yeah. So remember, this is three primary channels that we are dealing with at this point. And I'm going to put this right in gear. And every time I've done these charts, every single time, over 99% of the time, go look at it. It's been dead right. Up and down. And I'm going to explain that very quickly. So then, uh, uh, then a couple uh, days from 25th, 26th, um, Friday, we made a clean break, a clean break range. This is the range, right? This is a 30 point range, 28.55 on the E minis. And 28.25 on the low. That's 30 points. That's 30 point range, right? And uh, plus minus 30 points on the plus side, obviously, right now. So add the simplest way to somebody who told me a long time ago. And on a range breakout, you generally get just back of the napkin calculation, you get a 30 point move here. So 30-point moves takes us where? Exactly to where the channel is drawn. You can't make these things up, guys. Okay? So here's your range of 30 points. We broke out. So you add 30 points to this. 28.85. You can't make these things up, guys. So the bottom line is, if you look at this, and this is the beauty of structured clueless eight trading methods of trading big money trades guys and small money losses remember that it's not what you lose it's four or five times more that you make you always have some bad trades we all do but most of you do bad trades because you panic and you don't you know you're not following the charts or respecting them so Bottom line is 30 points from this monumental breakout 
takes us to the, the, the we call this channel two, we call this channel three, this is channel one. Okay. So now that we have entered, this channel was supposed to go like this all the way from the 23rd, if life was all peachy and a nice picnic, which it's not. It would have gone straight to where we're going. Now, it doesn't go in a straight line. We know that. It would have done this. It would have kind of gone like this and arrived at the destination, which would be 2885. Okay, so 2885 would be where you want to be a pretty committed seller, but you think it's going to just stop at 2885? No. So let me ask you all a question because it's already there. What do you think it's going to be the sh short term final destination going into the end of the month, which is January 31st, which is a big event, the super moon, which has a profound effect on markets, guys? The super moon, okay? I'm not kidding around. Where exactly, give or take a point or two, is the market going based on what I just showed? 2890. Simple. Thank you, Doc. That's it. There's nothing to think about it. It's already drawn there. And the thing you one has to, and this amazed me, amazes me, that I draw these structured charts and it all falls into place. Now, it's going to go to 2885. You're going to see volatility. No question about it. You're going to see volatility, you know, between now and the 2031st, which is right around the corner. Because right now, the big shorts, meaning those hedge funds who are short, they're just scrambling. They're like, oh, my God. They're losing billions of dollars every half an hour because they're so short the market, including George Soros and all those, you know, great investors who have been wrong on the U.S. financial markets for years. They all made their big money, their billions and billions of dollars during the crashes, the 2007, 2009, the 1987 crash. That's what they made their big money. And now all they talk about is how we're going to just all going to disappear. Great. Well, he's 80 some years old. He's got God knows how many billions of dollars. Okay, 50 billion dollars in the bank. Well. We're paupers, okay? We're hungry to make some money to provide for our families, to give to our charities, to help people, to improve our improve our life, to do the things that we love. He doesn't have to worry about all that crap, Mr. George Soros. I'm not talking his political ideology and all that stuff. So billionaires have a different mentality. They can say what the heck they want because they're not caring about what we, working people, we are all working people, are trying to do. So don't listen to those guys. Believe me, all right? And including some of the biggest fund managers who are like, oh, the market's just, Of course the market's going to be volatile. Of course we're going to drop a 1,000 points. You know, what's a 1,000 points for me? Nothing. We were there a few weeks ago. That's why clueless say trading is so critical for your success because we will pinpoint the levels prior to their happening called predictive analysis to my best of my F, uh, 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 skills. So saying all that, thank you, Amin, we are basically that once it goes to 2885, there is another mini short squeeze like this. Now that, you know, and that drives us to 2890. If you're long the S&P 500 from, let's say, from, 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 from when I mentioned it last week, we'll forget that. Let's say I mentioned it from Thursday. Those calls went berserk. They went from 50 cents to 2860 calls. And if you're not aware of this, that means you're not even looking at my Twitter feed, so you shouldn't be in my service. Just, you know, not you guys, but I'm saying in general. Um, they went from 50 cents, 70 cents a dollar to $11. So you put $1,000 in there. No, they went to $12.10. Now, remember, these prices are fast. So they didn't stay at $12.10 for like 20 minutes waiting for you to take profits. They were there for maybe 10 minutes. Uh, sorry, three minutes or a minute. So one of the ways from a trade management standpoint that, you know, you throw out and you put a sell order out there. And if it gets hit, it gets hit. 
on the higher level as it's moving. So they go from even the beginning of the day, they went from a dollar fifteen where they opened up to twelve dollars. That's eleven, close to eleven hundred percent. So you put one thousand dollars. Nobody, I, I, I seldom catch it from exactly the bottom to the end. But still, I was there earlier because we were there the day before. These are the S&P 2860 calls expiring on Friday, what we call lottos. Okay? Anyone can afford to lose 70 cents on an option unless you have your whole account in it. So, um, Mike, have a great day and a great weekend. We'll see you later. Um, so bottom line is that uh, that's a huge number. So $1,000 would be $12,000. $5,000 would be $60,000. You think it's a joke? And we are calling these shots. We're putting it out there. $2,000 would be $24,000. Got to think. And this is not the first time we're doing this. So you got to have something in there. Have 500 bucks. That'd be 6,000 bucks. It's a lot of money. To me, every penny is money. I don't rest on my laurels because I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth, even though my glorious parents, who, who God bless their souls, passed away many years ago, or some of the most accomplished doctors. And surgeons. But we weren't rolling in spoiled money. Or I wasn't given that. We worked hard. So you guys work hard and stop missing out on everything. And I know this resonates with a lot of people. And then some people accept it, they're not in denial, and they fix it. And then some of them are stubborn, they're always in denial, they never fix it, keep on doing the same things over and over again. Those people cannot be helped. Yes, they'll catch a couple of trades here and there. So let's get into it. You know what I'm saying. So the bottom line is, now that this, we had the 30 points, so this is where we're going. So let's do it on a Dow Jones standard. Every S&P point is roughly five or six Dow Jones points, okay? So we closed at... Uh, we closed on the S&P 500 at 2873, approximately. So if we're going to 2890, that's 17 points multiplied by roughly six. We basically have another 100 points to go on the Dow. Overall, might overshoot given these markets. 100 points takes us to 26,716. So from here to where we are, okay, 2673. This one, this uh, let's do the E minis 2675, 15 points. Yeah, so this to here to here is roughly another 100 points on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. That keeps us in limbo because it brings the Dow Jones to 26,000. I'm sorry, yeah, 26,717. Kind of an odd number because markets like round numbers. So my feeling is that they will most probably print 26,800. Trust me, they're like even round numbers, and the eight is a magical number, trust me. Okay, so if it's 26,800, got some room. That's, a you know, so that's about 120 points or so on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. That's where I think the market's going by, by the 31st. In between? We're going to do this. We might pull back, most probably, a little bit. We might even break below this. You know, what, I, what we would like to see as bulls is we would like to see this channel defended. We don't want a complete slippage out of this channel, which is fine. We'll go short intraday. You don't want to get too short and stay overnight short. Trust me, not at the end of the month when there's a lot of window dressing going on. I'll explain all that tonight on the ACS session. So bottom line is, we could very well come and test this level. What we don't want to see as, as longs, and this is standard procedure, by the way, can happen. A quick 100-point drop, yeah, is completely falling back into the range again. 
because that's just like after so much work we broke out and now we're back in that range again and that's fine because we'll trade it but this is what we want to see over the short term we want this even if we slip out a bit we want this to be defended and we basically want to zigzag remember it's going to zigzag its way back to these levels that's what's going to happen between now and january 31st one step at a time the markets are at new highs we are in some cases extreme overbought conditions but you know what the beauty about technical analysis is that what you might think which is completely wrong most of the time that oh my look at the market it's so high as though it's like shock and awe it means nothing when we are looking at the charts and what we are looking at the charts at this point is we're seeing overbought conditions but we're not seeing a technical breakdown which i consistently post as you guys know and one of my charts which will be the creme de la creme of the swing charts what i call the swing 533 is going to be again revealed tonight at 8 p.m., which will show what it will show, and I'll explain what it's showing, both on the short term and going into February. I'll entertain a, a quick uh, question uh, or two, and um, and basically uh, we're going to wrap up on time. So go ahead with any quick question you have, uh, Amin. Hey, are you going to record the ACS for tonight? It's Absolutely. hard for me to attend night sessions. No problem, sir. The ACS will be recorded and every paid ACS student will have direct link. The way we do it is I send a quick notification. It gets added to the direct, play, uh, what do you call, uh, it's going to be a private ACS. So your, your email will be in there and you'll receive a notification from Google um, saying that, you know, you've access to it. You click it, you listen to it at your own time. Thank you. Absolutely, sir. Any quick questions on uh, 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 what we went through today? Because this is a very relevant thing that we want to very much like the close up picture. Now, with all of this, uh, we didn't go over the RSI at the bottom of this. No, yeah. because we were, we were just looking at chart patterns. We don't, okay. you know, yeah, we're just looking at chart patterns at this point. RSI at this point is basically meaningless. It's very strong RSI. And like I said, we are going to go through that on the ACS, on more advanced RSI on the thing, what we call stochastics. So if I add the stochastics to this, for example, on the short term, the stochastics, this stochastic is, uh, which is, you understand the stochastics is basically the second derivative of the actual relative strength index, okay? A more clearer indicator. If you look at this here, you can actually do pattern analysis on stochastics too. This is really powerful. See, it's just, it's like, you know, this is obviously short term. It consistently is staying above the 80 level, denoting short term powerful momentum upside. And if you want to look at it on a daily basis, so that answers the RSI question for you. Okay. I mean, uh, and if you look at the daily, the daily RSI, forget it. it the daily RSI, look at that. It's consistently all through 2018. This is your daily RSI. Just look at the RSI for a minute. Call it stochastics because that's what it is. This is 2018. Come on, give me a pen. 2018. We busted a move through. After the last day selling 29th, remember everyone freaked out and stuff. We were moderately long and see you later. Look what the look what the stochastics is doing. Consistently over 80. This is a short on the short term, on the short to intermediate term. This is a bear, bearish, or a short trader's nightmare. A long time ago, I was there. I was never like dogmatically bearish because my whole outlook on view on life is like always, you know. Things are always going to be better tomorrow, but I was caught before when I was knew less about technical analysis many years ago on this type of emotional behavior. It is painful because you're consistently trying to make money on the short side and you're failing. You're failing. You finally give up. That's when markets top. So look at the look at the look at your stochastics. Does that answer your question, Doctor? Uh, yes. Exactly. 
This is the difference. The same thing happened here back in October. And then it's going to keep on doing that. We're going to I look, I look at roughly 32 different indicators. I only show a few. I show the simplest ones. And, and, um, and some of them will start to give me the thing. Now, in between this, it's done this. These are the 100-point drops type of thing. But unless you see on the daily and the weekly, we're going to talk about that in tonight's thing, a consistent pullback. And these things, by the way, happened, but they lasted 48 hours. That's another sign. And this is on the daily. That's another sign of a pretty monstrous powerful it surge that's going on right now and one of the reasons for the surge is obviously inflow of money people are finally putting money in u.s stocks do you know that after eight years more money has still gone out of u.s stocks than gone in from retail investor after eight years since 2009 that this market rally has started that net net more money has left the stock market than come in does that come as a shock to most people? Absolutely. But that's the truth. There have been more outflows than inflows. When the day comes, there's more inflows than outflows over a period of time. It's starting to happen now over the short term. But let's say over a period of three years, you'll see more inflows of U.S. retail money into U.S. equity funds in the mutual fund complex, for example, or stocks. Then you know the market is the bull market is starting to top. We're quite far from that, believe it or not. On that note, we'll see you guys tonight. Session will be uh, uploaded tonight's advanced coaching session for paid ACS students. Everyone else who is listening to it, this is just a sample of what we do, and this is still worth money. Imagine what we do in the more serious stuff. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. God bless you all. Thanks, Frank. Thank you.